Uh, start. Uh, so I would like to welcome all of you to this session. Uh, this session is uh, is related to the uh, role of 5G and next generation wireless communication and technology in the uh, 4.0 industrial uh, industrial revolution. So basically, uh, today we will have four speech, and this session is. A, let's say a mix between presentation and the, and the final panel in which uh, we will try to in some way to uh, to listen to the expert of uh, of this session so to the speakers of this of this session we will have uh, four speaker uh, starting with uh, Christoph Fufferer. Uh, just let me uh, tell you something about the speaker. Uh, Christoph is a topic expert in technology and innovation, mobile network technologies, as well as network virtualization and and data and data sensor. And uh, Christoph is going to talk about the uh, how to use some enabling technologies and methodologies like predictive maintenance, uh, augmented and virtual reality, and how these technologies are connected with, with 5G with 5G network. Just let me check. Christoph, you are here, you are here, right? I'm here and I hear loud and clear. I hope you okay, hear me per too. perfect. So then after the uh, the speech of Christoph, we will have Professor uh, Xianbing Wang. Uh, is professor at uh, at Canada Research Western University uh, and is uh, uh, is uh, also an expert in this uh, in this domain uh, with over 450 highly highly uh, cit cited journal and conference uh, and conference paper in addition to 30 uh, granted and pending patents and several uh, other uh, other contribution and he is going he is going to talk about uh, this dramatic let me say evolution of 5g and even 6g uh, and their role in the industrial transform transformation the third speaker uh, will be professor wei ming sheng is full professor at the uh, wazong university of science and technology in china uh, he is also the program co-chair of the ism conference he is a well-known researcher international researcher in the area of intelligent manufacturing and he is going to talk about 5G application in uh, in intelligent manufacturing. And then the final speaker will be uh, Rank CQ. He is a senior lecturer at the University of Bed Bedfordshire, United Kingdom. It's my pleasure to have Rank C here because we are also working together on a, a European project and I feel related to robotics and uh, and 5G application in with verticals uh, use case in different uh, in different sectors and I feel that Renxi uh, will uh, say something more during uh, during his uh, presentation. So each speaker will have 15 minutes for presentation. Uh, we don't make questions uh, during the presentation. We listen at the question 15 minutes each one and then uh, we will open the discussion and everyone will be free to make questions to the four uh, speakers. So uh, therefore I would like to to start immediately uh, with Christoph and his speech. The floor is yours and you have 15 minutes. Thank you, Francesco, for the, for the introduction and, and thanks for having me uh, on this conference. Um, hello also to the audience. Um, let me just quickly bring up the screen and Francesco, let me know if you see everything and hear everything well, then I get going. Yeah, yes, perfectly. We perfect. see and we can hear you. Very well. Uh, then maybe two more words on my side. I'm Christoph, a principal with Arthur Little. Uh, Arthur Little, or, or short ADL, is one of the leading management consultancy globally. Uh, we specialize in the in the TMT sectors, um, and of course, there uh, more and more are touching on industry 4.0 applications and uh, 5G in the context of of, of mobile private networks and um, yeah, network slicing. Today, I want to use the, the 15 minutes um, to bring you a bit of the perspective of the market. So what are we currently observing? Uh, what are clients tendering um, and where is the industry heading um, in terms of applications? On the one hand, clearly we'll speak about that, but equally important, um, we'll focus on what are the underlying technologies, uh, being it cellular or Wi-Fi, that enable those new um, applications and new use cases. 
and what actually needs to be in place um, to, um, yeah, to generate value, generate a business value uh, to the clients. So we'll be those 15 minutes, and as Francesco said, happy to take any questions after the, uh, after the uh, presentations of my colleagues. Where are we coming from and, and, and what's driving the, uh, the increased need for, um, for an enterprise networking requirements? And it, it's fairly simple. If we look in today's uh, digitization roadmaps of, of main um, manufacturing, but also logistics companies globally, we can see that um, the throughput requirements in terms of uplink and downlink are exploding. Um, they have um, tenfolded over the last seven years. Um, so that, that's clearly one thing that, that brings current networks, especially Wi-Fi, uh, to, their, um, to their borders. On the other hand, uh, we see that more and more um, devices get to get connected and that the uh, average device density per cell site um, is, is, is increasingly massively. Uh, we see that in, in, in specific use cases, especially when we think about logistics or production line monitoring, there is, it, it's, we often see that it's, it's a roughly a hundredfold um, to, to the pre-industry um, yeah, pre, um, 4.0 uh, standards. And last but not least, and, and I think that's one of the, of the key drivers for, for when we speak about private networks, is that the cloud adoption has skyrocketed. And, and we see that um, multi-cloud is, is not um, an exception anymore. It's becoming more the standard. And that enterprises, um, they, they want to have their, their production um, processing, their production monitoring, their production automation, um, not in one cloud environment, but it needs to be multi-cloud proof and, and the, um, the interaction between those clouds, uh, they need to be seamless. So that's a bit the context um, where we're coming from and obviously what drives the, the increasing uh, enterprise network requirements. And if we think that further and relying on the, on the I would say categorization of free GPP, they are basically clustering um, the, the needs of 5G in, in three broad categories. We have a massive machine type communication where there's very low throughput, uh, but very high device density. We have um, enhanced mobile broadband use cases uh, where, um, as, the, as the name says, broadband uh, applications are there and therefore throughputs are important. And last but not least, we have critical machine type communication where it's more focused on, on latency and network reliability. So those are the drivers that the use case bring. But at the same time, uh, when, we, when we see tenders of, of enterprises in the, um, in the networking space, we see that scalability, uh, security, automation, availability, like Non, um, non technical factors, uh, they become increasingly important um, and, and they increasingly are shaping the way enterprises ultimately tender and, and procure their, uh, their networking. And if you think that through, uh, basically what, what we're seeing is that enterprises, they are left with a three plus one a strategic choices when it comes to connectivity for the industry for the zero applications. And those are cellular, Clearly, and, and in cellular, we need to differentiate between what can be achieved via the public network, what can be achieved via, in the future, uh, slices of that public network, and what, are, what use cases require really dedicated networks, um, what we commonly refer to as, as mobile private networks. That's clearly the, the cellular angle that will become more and more important. At the same time, um, I think there's a strong consensus in the industry that Wi-Fi will still have um, a very dominant play and will have areas where it's where it most likely will be superior to any cellular alternative. Why is that the case? Um, here to outline a bit the, the strength and weaknesses of both technologies, so cellular and here's the proxy 5G and, and Wi-Fi 6 uh, for the Wi-Fi uh, standards. You can see that they are they are competing not head on, but they are actually quite complementary um, when we think about where they where they're gonna be applied and what their strengths and weaknesses are. And what we see more and more in the industry is that it's not a question of do I replace cellular with Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi with cellular. It's rather how can I combine those two technologies um, to have a best-in-class enterprise connectivity, and increasingly. Um, 5G and, and more broadly cellular connectivity is linked to the OT, to the operations technology side of a network, and IT is more on the, uh, sorry, and, and Wi-Fi is more on the IT side of things, so um, back offices and, and, and things like that. So for us, it's 
not so much an either or, but it's rather how do we combine uh, both technologies and the strength to, to have best in class uh, connectivity assurance. For today, though, um, I would want to focus a bit more on the uh, on the cellular side uh, and, and see uh, yeah, and, and outline how we see the market developing. And cellular has been around for some time, right? You, 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 there is 2G, 3G, 4G, uh, and an upcoming 5G. And, and obviously, so far, I think it's fair to say that cellular has only had very limited impact on enterprise networking and um, therefore also on uh, Industry 4.0 applications. Why is that changing with, with 5G? And, and we see really four main, um, four, five main drivers to, um, to explain that. Clearly is that um, 5G provides a different set of propositions and with um, ultra reliable low latency and massive machine type communication, 5G is getting closer to uh, what in enterprise requirements ultimately are. That's, that's one thing and, and, and 5G being more broadly available ultimately drives also enterprise adoption. Second, um, cellular becomes available in LAN context. What do we mean by that? In previous technologies, um, I think cellular was very much linked to the wide area network use case, the macro network use case, and um, was hard to scale down. Now with a virtualization and containerization of, of network functions, VNFs, um, that cost of deployment and that scalability of deployment massively changes, and, and therefore um, the accessibility also in a LAN environment is much higher. Third, um, and, and that's especially true if you look into um, countries where the spectrum has been liberalized, um, Germany, uh, the United States with CBRS, um, UK to a certain extent, spectrum is just more widely available, especially in the higher frequencies, so C-band and millimeter wave, and the direct accessibility um, to enterprises really drives um, cellular connectivity for, for Industry 4.0 applications. Furthermore, um, Next to the established uh, wide area macro network vendors, um, your, your ZTEs, your Huawei's, your Nokia's, your Ericsson's, we see that a new set of, of more disruptive vendors is entering the playing field and um, support the, um, the development of, of mobile private network use cases, also because the cost profile is different. You could look into companies like Alphanet, Ruckus, Comscope, um, there is Acceleron, so there is many um, that really focus now on the on the enterprise and local area network context. And last but not least, also from the demand side, of course, um, the first four are rather supply side, but also from the demand side, as we discussed before, um, enterprise applications are evolving in a way um, where cellular connectivity is just um, paramount to enable use cases. Let's think of, of handovers, uh, let's think of um, increased uh, throughputs um, and, and network reliability as, as just some of those. And mobile private networks and, and, and 5G more broadly in, in the sense of, of, of Industry 4.0 is really not a future topic, it's there yet. Um, to our knowledge of, of ADL, and, and we track those um, fairly accurately, I, I would think, um, we know that there is at least 500 of those MPNs um, deployed over the world um, that, that we know in, in detail and we know the vendor setups and um, if you if you believe public sources and uh, publications of, of vendors etc there is estimated to be over 7000 MPNs globally and they are really um, I would think well distributed there is obviously um, a lot of innovation going on in China um, you see a lot of deployments in Europe again especially in Germany where, where there is industry frequencies available uh, but also the US with, with CBRS has made a strong uh, statement towards um, towards cellular um, and, and 5G in, in an industrial environment in terms of industries um, here's just a couple of, of selected examples but you can see it's actually across industry so it's not linked to manufacturing only we see deployments in airports, Charles de Gaulle, for example. We see factories, we see power plants, we see stadiums. So it's it's really broad, both geographically um, and um, also in terms of sectors, in terms of verticals. And I think that itself is, is a fairly strong statement that that is not a hype, but it's rather technology that is here to stay and will ultimately complement Wi-Fi. <sighs> what are the use cases um, that are really uh, currently I would think benefit, but also driving a 5G in an industrial context. And 
there, there's obviously many, many more, but if we if we aggregate um, to the highest level, we see actually four uh, main use case categories that that are being deployed and that are being tendered. The first one I think is is, is the flagship use case for 5G in any um, in any industry 4.0 um, world is, is the the AGVs, the autonomous guided vehicles, small robots that do logistic jobs and, and are uh, autonomous guided through through any factory. For example, you can see it. Osram has a very good um, deployment of that. You have Ego and, and others, but that's really the standout use case. Also, because handovers there are critical, and um, that's why 5G is very well suited to to take care. Next to that, um, the use case cluster group of um, of predictive maintenance applications. So, um, constant monitoring of um, of production lines um, in, in terms of uh, of pressures, in terms of vibration, temperatures, um, etc for the sake of, of predicting uh, maintenance cycles, preventing um, unplanned maintenance, and, and just um, ultimately increase the, the effectiveness of, um, of any production. Next to that, um, linked, but at, at the same time also um, as a separate use case group is, is production line monitoring. And they are not so much focused on the, on the status of the, um, of the machinery itself, but rather on the output. Um, a good example is for is, is a European paper manufacturer that deployed cameras um, on their production lines to see if there's any fault um, in production and, and um, within milliseconds actually the, the production can be stopped to avoid um, yeah, faults or, or unwanted output. And there's many more um, applications in semiconductor industry also, um, as well as in, in, in upstream and downstream oil. And last but not least, um, there is the, the huge use case cluster around uh, virtual reality and augmented reality, obviously driven by, by HoloLenses and, and Google Glasses and then what there is where um, technicians, they are not lo no longer flying to sites, but rather being um, yeah, virtually there assisting uh, local um, workers with, with instructions for, for any maintenance job, for any production job, just via the, via the glasses. As you can imagine, that requires high throughput, requires latency, and to a certain extent also reliability. So again, something where, where 5G um, is, is paramount. How do we see the market? Um, I think interestingly enough, um, today, we, we would estimate the, uh, the MPN market globally at around 3 billion, um, and, and a fair share of that is, is still related to, to POCs, uh, to pilots, and, and to, yeah, I would say, starting commercial applications around the globe. However, with what we see and, and how, we, how we see the market developing, uh, we're certain that there will be a 50 plus billion opportunity globally by, by 2025. Um, also, if you if you look into the um, the appetite of, of the vendors, the large equipment vendors, but also the um, the new kids on the block, and the investment and, and the funding that goes into those companies um, is, is significant on on, on that um, front. So we're very confident that the market will uh, will reach um, a level of, of fifty plus billion by by twenty twenty five. Lastly, um, being a, being a bit mindful of of the time. It's a market that is evolving clearly. Um, it's it's not a mature market, and and vendors um, as well as enablers, system integrators, um, mobile network operators, they need still need to find their position in in that market, and then boundaries are fluent. But you can you can summarize it in in actually four main uh, player types that are currently around um, for for mobile private networks and and industrial um, yeah yeah smart manufacturing basically. You have the the uh, connectivity providers, um, the network equipment providers, ZTE, Huawei, Ericsson, Nokia. On the one hand, you have clearly the MNOs that are on, on in terms of value chain providing the connectivity. You have the systems integrators who, who, who work on the back end and work on enabling use cases. And lastly, you have those new kids on the block vendors that really specialized on bringing 5G uh, to a, to a LAN context and um, providing a new proposition that is um, yeah, more geared towards the, um, the smart manufacturing use cases, but any other digital use cases that an enterprise has versus um, any macro deployments. You can see some of them here, Alphanet, Accelera, and Altiostar. There's a wider, wide array of, of players coming up, and uh, as said before, there's huge appetite of 
both the investment community, but also the um, the governments and, and the policymakers to, to foster that new ecosystem. And with that, uh, I would like to conclude, um, hand back over um, to the host and, and thanks for your attention. Thank you, Christoph, for this very interesting presentation. We move now to the second speaker. Uh, so we invite Professor Xianbing Wang to uh, switch on the camera, share the screen, and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, are you able to see my slides? Yeah, perfectly. OK. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Xianbin Wang, a professor at Western University. So for today's uh, presentation, I'm going to talk about the evolution of 5G and 6G for Industry 4.0 and vertical industries. Now, in this short presentation, I will talk about a few aspects. The first part is the wireless evolution from 1G to 6G. And then secondly, I will talk about Industry 4.0 and future rule and key performance indicators of 5G and 6G. And lastly, I will share some uh, thoughts on the future development of intelligent 5G and 6G communications uh, for Industry 4.0. Now let's look at the uh, history of wireless technologies from 1G to even 6G. Now, uh, in the last around 40 years, we have witnessed the dramatic evolutions of wireless technologies from 1G to 4G. And we can recall, you know, for the first generation, we have the analog communications. And from the second generation, we have digital communication technologies where we can send short messages. And for the third generation, uh, we will be able. We were able to uh, access internet over uh, the cellular network, and uh, for the 4G uh, network, we are able to uh, watch uh, video clips. That's most of the phones we still uh, use today. Now, in summarizing the uh, technologies between 1G and 4G, we basically uh, solved the uh, human communication needs. Uh, through the cellular uh, networks. Now, as we are moving to 5G, uh, one important element is the machine communication. And uh, we want to enable the Internet of Everything, which is the uh, mix of human and machines, and particularly, you know, uh, to empower uh, large scale uh, industry applications by uh, uh, enabling uh, massive machine communications. And here we listed a few examples. For example, uh, the autonomous vehicles and the intelligent transportation systems and smart uh, factory and uh, uh, industry uh, 4.0. And uh, in the industry 4.0, uh, one of the main purpose is to uh, uh, achieve uh, the industry uh, process uh, control um, uh, management uh, by uh, large scale information gathering analysis and control. <clears throat> now let's talk about uh, the industry 4.0 and a future rule of uh, 5G and 6G. <clears throat> Now, if we look at the uh, Industry 4.0, it's basically a large-scale industry IoT systems where we use the system uh, to collect the information to uh, do real-time uh, diagnosis uh, analysis of the industry process. And uh, furthermore, we would like to uh, provide our uh, feedback input and control for value realization. So uh, in a different perspective, uh, this uh, large scale industry uh, IoT system can be considered as a physical cyber system uh, that uh, is, um, you know, uh, relies on <clears throat> the uh, network uh, infrastructure for information gathering. But our purpose really is to uh, get in touch with the physical uh, process 
that we can monitor, uh, analyze, and control. Now we could uh, use this uh, figure to uh, <clears throat> have a better understanding of this process. For the industry 4.0 process, which is a physical process, and if we would like to monitor and analyze and, and you know, uh, apply our control uh, to this physical process uh, in the digital domain, we have no way, uh, you know, uh, we, we do not have this direct connection in the virtual world. As a result, we have to rely on this cyber world, which is the network infrastructure, uh, so that, you know, we can use the 5G network, Wi-Fi network, um, the uh, LoRa, you know, uh, Zigbee, uh, all kind of uh, basically access network so that we can collect the information uh, on a larger scale. And we could even create a digital uh, image of uh, digital model of the physical process, which is the concept of digital twin. So basically our fundamental goal here is that in the virtual world we would like to uh, create a digital image a digital model of the physical world so that we can analyze predict uh, control and eventually for uh, value realization so this is basically uh, the um, goal of uh, the 5g and 6g now, uh, in summarizing that the goal of uh, the wireless access network for future uh, industry system is that is to interconnect and integrate different sense, intelligence, and capabilities for application-oriented value realization. So this is the uh, the goal uh, or, or you know our expectation for future uh, wireless uh, networks in supporting the industry 4.0. Now, let's talk about uh, this rule in a more uh, detailed way. Uh, we use this Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and on the left side is like, you know, uh, the, uh, I mean, here is, is about human needs. We use this as an example to elaborate you know, how we could achieve the value and, and what kind of rule uh, the uh, future wireless network uh, can play. So the basic aspect is that, you know, we rely on the network to connect everything. Now, on, on, the, uh, on the next level is that, you know, we could use a network to achieve the connected intelligence that we can exchange knowledge not just raw data but is knowledge sharing now the highest level is the value realization particularly you know for the vertical industry where we have all kind of system we have diverse needs so uh, the value realization is is really need lots of like intelligence so this is like, you know, in a very uh, brief way to explain the future rule of 5G and 6G. Now, the 5G challenges is that it use a very simple scenario specific solution where, you know, I divide so many different applications into three scenarios. EMBB, URLC, and MMTC, and which, in my personal opinion, you know, we are not that effective in meeting the future need, needs. Particularly, you know, we have so many um, different industry applications from you know vertical industries. So as a result, eventually, we can now talk about the um, really the performance indicator for 6G. And you know, in comparing with in, in comparison with 5G, so in 5G is is still we consider as a communication network, but in 6G is more like a integrated ICT system where you have communication, you have computing, you have um, 
coordination intelligence all integrated. So in evaluating the performance of search system, we uh, divide the KPIs into three domains. The bottom one, the, the first dimension is the conventional uh, communication related, you know, uh, KPIs. But however, we uh, expanded in uh, with with a few new elements, particularly reliability, latency, trust, privacy, and security management. And in terms of the communication performance, there is a volumetric uh, and energy efficiency. Now, in the second dimension is situation awareness and connected intelligence. And it will rely on the integration of communication, sensing, localization, synchronization, knowledge exchange, collaboration. So this is the second uh, domain of the KPIs for 6G. And for <clears throat> the third dimension is to evaluate the system effectiveness, scalability, under dynamic complex you know, uh, situations. So we have system scalability, protocol efficiency, system agility for fast orchestration and value realization. So this slide shows, you know, the expectation for 6G in achieving, uh, in supporting the uh, future industry related, you know, transformation vertical industry needs. So basically uh, the 6G is is a complex system rather than just you know standalone communication network it will uh, provide the massive machine and human mixed communication uh, needs but on the other side it will be able to uh, support the connected intelligence that kind of uh, you know uh, needs and on the uh, eventual goal is to achieve the goal value oriented you know system depends on your uh, needs the particular industry application you, you want to support the system operation the underlying you know uh, operation mechanism will be uh, adapted so the last aspect I want to talk about is a few uh, areas uh, that we can achieve intelligent 5G, 6G communications for Industry 4.0. Here I listed a few uh, bullet points. Uh, the first one is a situation aware network operation through massive data collection and machine learning. Um, and second area is a service oriented orchestration of uh, ICT resources fast decision making through machine learning and data analytics and collaborative communication computing and machine learning for cost effective service provisioning so in summarizing uh my uh short presentation um the uh wireless communication technology particularly uh, 5g and 6g is the critical enabling technology for future industry transformation. And uh, um, for the future 5G and 6G, uh, it will be further integrated with uh, uh, the industry system. And uh, the uh, <clears throat> situation or aware or intelligent operation of uh, the 5G and 6G is the fundamental uh, uh, enabling technology to achieve the value realization in industry 4.0. Uh, with that, uh, I uh, stop my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much for this interesting presentation where we have seen actually uh, the evolution from 1G to 5 and 6G and how to, you know, to create a better world from this point of view. And now perhaps we will go a little bit more in details uh, and Professor Wei Ming Shen will provide uh, some additional information about 5G and intelligent manufacturing. The floor is yours. I'm trying to show... Show my screen? Not yet. I, I will never show. Oh, it's this one? Open show. Yeah, okay. Open show. What's the, oh, what's the show? Mm -hmm. 
Marshall, what's the shoot? Sorry. Can you see my screen? Uh, there should be like an arrow. Yeah, not yet. Uh, you should you should see uh, an arrow in the upper right part of the screen, uh, close to yeah, the. Yeah, I'm sure, but uh, I what what's to show screen? Can you see? Can you see my screen? Uh, now it's coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. go. Thank you. I never use some um, Microsoft team to show screen. OK, um, yeah. it's, uh, so, it's, so you can see my screen, right? I have to start my. Yeah, yes, correctly. Yes, we can see it. So start my presentation, right? OK, go. OK, thank you. And uh, thank you for, for the introduction. And uh, I'm uh, Wei Min Shen, I'm currently at the uh, Huazong University of Science Technology in China. In fact, I. I spent five years in, in France, Europe, and uh, 10 to three years uh, in, in Canada, and uh, working closely uh, with uh, Xianbin Wang, in fact, in Canada. And uh, my background is uh, more mechanical because I had my first two degree in mechanical engineering, and I did my PhD in France in artificial intelligence. So that's a, a kind of natural nature application of artificial intelligence in mechanical manuf and manufacturing. So my area during the past 30, 35 years is more in intelligent manufacturing, smart manufacturing. So and uh, Xianbin uh, Wang, Xianbin has already provided a very good overview of the techno 5G, 6G technology, including the uh, historical uh, review of the from 1G to 6G. And uh, Christoph provided a very good perspective on, on business side of 5G and including Wi-Fi 6, so it's very important. It's very interesting. I will probably focus a little bit on on the on the on the on the application of man, uh, 5G in manufacturing side, and I have to monitor my time. And uh, so one is uh, uh, I won't it's So I will probably briefly talk a uh, review of what uh, Xianbin already uh, mentioned and the key technology which we which are being applied to 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 smart manufacturing internal in manufacturing of course uh, we have the EMPB basically is enhanced uh, mobile band board uh, band band and uh, M MTC as a massive machine type communication and the URL is ultra reliable low latency uh, communication. All these three are so important in manufacturing environment, uh, and uh, I will probably will be briefly mentioned during the like uh, in the next few slides about why, and then uh, cloud LAN because all the application before even 5G we have already a lots of cloud manufacturing many application on in the cloud, so cloud LAN become another level of application. And in fact, the Mac, um, multi-access edge computing, I consider also to be, because of 5G now, uh, this uh, uh, edge computing becomes so important in the smart factory, in the manufacturing environment. And the other one is, in fact, uh, one, one side we call massive IoT connection. In fact, in the early, we also use the D2D communication because early stage of, uh, uh, in, of course, Indach 4.0 is the most de proposed developed in Europe, and and at the same time in in, in North America, in particular in, in US, uh, people call uh, start the uh, industry internet or machine to machine communication. So machine to machine or device to device communication is really important in the manufacturing environment. Even though D to D, I think it was not in the early version of the 5G standard. I, I think I think it's already in R617 or maybe for sure maybe in, in 6G uh, um, a kind of D2D communication or machine to my really machine to my machine communication because this is very important in, in, in manufacturing applications. So that's key tech now all these key technology are so important uh, I probably but in uh, later on. Oops next slides. So that's a uh, kind of show a few. I will have just uh, because some um, Christoph already mentioned a few. Uh, he, call, he called for user cases. I call the applications, basically the domain of application. They have some some overlaps over there. First one is really a human machine interface or human non human robot uh, inter. Uh, collaboration interfaces because when in uh, they are implemented in manufacturing environment 
human machine collaborate and human needed to communicate with human with some de available de devices, maybe Google glasses. They needed to communicate wirelessly, mostly wirelessly uh, with machines, with robots. So that, that's why if 5G can be used, it will be really helpful in this kind of wireless communication environment. So human machine interface is one, one, one very important application 5G in manufacturing. And uh, I think, and second one, process automation, factory automation, monitoring, maintenance, uh, lo I will leave you one by one in the next few slides. First one, I think it's had a very, it has some overlap with what Christoph already mentioned, like uh, the human machine interface slide. So like uh, AR, augmented reality, and in this case, five, in 5G, EMBB of 5G play a very important role because we need a blank, uh, like a, really it's, it's the enhanced mobile uh, brand board uh, communication needed for this kind of communication, high volume communication. And also need a remote access and control. In this case, we need a low latency because you have robot and a machine, a human collaborative with machine or, or with a robot, you cannot have delay. If we have delay and in a real manufacturing environment, that's really very uh, critical. So that 5G uh, URLL slice is so important in this kind of uh, um, uh, uh, in application to enhance, to ensure the low lat latency. So next application is the process application and it's for the perceived health studies who automatically and, and, and control and, and automatically control the process parameters because in many, particularly in process industry, there are so many parameters needed to be monitored and controlled. So like for temperatures, liquid level, pressure, et cetera, there are many. So that's in this kind of environment, uh, it's massive uh, machine type of communication is so important for this kind of uh, communication. And uh, also to, I mean, because in this kind of environment, we, uh, Christoph already mentioned AGVs. In addition to AGVs, there may also be other mobile robots working in the shelf floor. And then that's, we, that's why we need, when we have this kind of mobile robots or AGVs working in the shelf floor, we need a low latency because we don't want to have a delay and then an accident already happened and the, the communication had not go through yet. So, so that's so important in the manufacturing environment. Factory automation and a little bit uh, probably is more on the smart factory side. So we really need, uh, really needed a wife like, 20 some years ago, we already had early wireless, we call it wireless sensor network. And of course, at that time, we already had 3G or 4G, but we really had lots of challenges with, with, the, with the communication bandwidth and with the, with the, with the slow, uh, slow, slow network connection. And now we have 5G that's play in a very important role. And in fact, really, of course, uh, alerts, alarms, uh, and uh, must be in real time. And of course, in that, that particular scenario, low latency of uh, URLLC slice is so important because we, we cannot allow, we cannot afford the low latency in this kind of uh, communication. And uh, so this one I had, uh, we, we had lots of discussions uh, uh, because a a AGV in that particular occasion for the initial indoor, uh, in, in within the shelf floor uh, logistics, or maybe can also be the log uh, material handling in the industrial park scenarios. And in fact, WAFA, WAFA, WAFA 6, WAFA early WAFA, already play a very important role in this kind of in environment. But in industrial park scenario, because you have indoor and outdoor, particularly you have transition between indoor and outdoor situation, 5G probably will be play a much better role in this kind of environment. And uh, that's, of, of course, uh, Christopher already also mentioned about uh, predictive maintenance, but, uh, but of course, we have, when you have when you do maintenance, you only you also need monitoring. So mod, I, I call it monitoring and maintenance is one area of big area of 
of intelligent manufacturing. So 5G plays a very important role if for monitoring and sensing in real time with a blank uh, like a EMBB and also with a low length latency for the for the quest response to alarms, alerts, all kind of scenarios. And uh, to uh, even though I probably want to ma mention a little bit is that many applications demonstration of 5G in smart manufacturing in China already lost. I already was giving probably a dozen, a few dozens of demonstrations of applications in China. But I would say maybe 70, 80 percent of this kind of this kind of demonstrations of applications situations and the. No, I, I I would say that 5G may not be really needed, which means in this kind of situation, the far far even 4G will be enough for for the situation for the application I have already seen, and in fact we really haven't seen good even though I mentioned the five different type of applications, but in the real demonstrations of applications I have seen so far in China. I really haven't seen the good one, like the taking advantage of, of really the, the, the 5G or six, not the really 6G yet for these applications. And uh, in last, this is my last slide about the challenges for 5G applications, what I have seen. One is uh, because, uh, as you know, we, I mentioned the elevation 15, 16, now I think 17, and the 6G uh, also coming up. So we have a lot of, not a lot, but at least uh, some uncertainty of of 5G standardization because you have change and then we don't know what, what will be the standard next coming out. So for them, D2D -D communication is so important, but look like I, I, I was waiting, but the things that is coming out uh, R17, maybe 6G for sure, but the, this kind of standardization creates some uncertainty for the application in manufacturing. And uh, since uh, um, since many deployment in shelf floor in, in manufacturing and, and the people are using private 5G, not really uh, public 5G because public 5G you have to pay for the for the for the for the mobile uh, cell uh, communication companies. So many companies uh, deploy using private 5G, but uh, there is a licensing uh, spectral licensing issues and other, other issues. This is also a challenge I can see. And then some people are saying that intelligent manufacturing, smart manufacturing, if you don't have 5G, you, can, you cannot uh, say you need the code and the intelligent manufacturing, I don't agree at all. In fact, I have been working uh, on in intelligent manufacturing for the past 25, even 30 years, and we didn't have even 3G, 4G before. So, so but the 5G and the artificial intelligence working together for intelligent manufacturing, we be sure of sure we we'll have more advanced internal manufacturing systems. Of course, uh, last but not the least point is that uh, security is always key for for the industrial uh, companies. So it's it's also some challenge uh, in when when we way deploy five G in intelligent manufacturing. I think I step stop here. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks a lot for. Also, in this case, a very interesting overview. Uh, and I uh, move now to the next speaker. So I invite Rangsi to switch on the camera and share the screen. And the floor is yours. OK, thank you very much. Let me share my application. OK, great. All right, uh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to make this presentation over here. We had three fantastic presentations just now talking about the capability of 5G and beyond with different kind of potentials in promoting uh, the vertical industry. Uh, my name is Ren Ji Qiu. I'm a senior lecturer from the University of Bedfordshire. I'm also the scientific coordinator of 5G ERA project sponsored by H2020. And Francisco mentioned we are the project partner in the, in the development. So using this chance, what I want to do is that we want to share some experience. We learned about the 5G technology, and then in the project we found that 5G is a fantastic technology, with lots of potentials, but there are also some limitations. So uh, a lot of things we try to do will lead to significant future, but there's still a lot of obstacles in front of us on actually realizing the potentials. 
Uh, in terms of the link between the autonomous robots and 5G technology, we know that autonomous robots are essential for many 5G verticals, significant for Industry 4.0, automated mobility, and so on and so forth. The major problem we are facing with autonomous robots is that the real-world deployment are still limited. We need more intelligence, they need more autonomy in the deployment of robots. Hopefully, 5G and beyond and cloud computing can help us to realize the potential of the, the new intelligence over here. On the other hand, in terms of the development of uh, autonomous robot, uh, we have something called robot operating system. This is kind of uh, most popular frameworks on building autonomous robots. On the 5G side, obviously, there are great potential to enhance the robot autonomy, enhance the robot applications. One of the key issues we, we face that what is the best way to evaluate the need of the robot vertical? And that, that's lead to another question. Is that need from the robot vertical a compatible with the emerging technology? Or, or are this emerging technology actually addressing the need of our vertical? So this is kind of question we, we, we feel is quite important to actually promoting the application of the 5G technology. And in terms of the artificial intelligence and machine learning, the load of achievement have been achieved in the last decade. It was very successful with scalable applications like games, AlphaGo and AlphaZero, object recognition, image night. They have been very, very successful. But in terms of autonomous robot, we are still limited on deployment and dealing with real world settings. It's kind of hard for us to be repeating the success of AI and machine learning in the real field of autonomous robots. It's not say that we can't do one thing specific. If we know exactly what will be the scenario, what will be the task, we'll find a solution for that. But we cannot scale that. It's a big problem for the autonomous robot is that the scalability is limited. So we are very good in the lab environment, but in the real world setting, we are limited. We know that 5G and cloud are the key enabling technology behind the AI and machine learning. They are very good with scalability, virtualization, or software defined network to enable things which was not possible before. But somehow we feel that there are some lakes of vertical knowledge in the development of uh, 5G technology to actually addressing the need of verticals. A good example will be, I think we mentioned about UR RLC with a latency of in the area of one millisecond. But for our six degree of freedom of arms, the actual motor response time is in 100 milliseconds. So we can never go chance to use that with the capability provided. Uh, in terms of the building autonomous robot, uh, we use ROS. This is initial design for use case, which is towards centralized applications. Uh, they are designed for a single robot or small group of robot with local area network. So the assumption is that the resource is kind of workstation class. Our robot with kind of five or six uh, workstation installed inside the robot to help the perception manipulation. And the uh, assumption is that always we got good network connection. And this is largely designed for the research um, proof of concept. But this is quickly adopted in all areas of autonomous robot, self-driving car, drones, industry arm, human robot. Nowadays, you can find the ROS application over there. But the reality is the application are distributed. We are working in a distributed environment. The network is not ideal. And there are many kind of unexpected problems with uh, network connectivity. In the end, most of our tests with autonomous robot is that we have actual physical physical network cable connected on the robot to ensure the quality of service to satisfy the need. So this is kind of things like lakes of quality assurance mechanism in the field of robot development nowadays. We have been 
adapting ourselves to meet the needs. So there's a revision on the robot development environment. We call that ROSE 2. But there's still lack of patterns and supporting tools that is essential required by the deployment, such as life cycle management, adaptive configuration for the resources. And another important issue is that from the intelligence perspective, the development is still assuming some kind of centralized intelligence. And if we have multiple robot configuration with cloud and add in the environment, how to reuse the intelligence, how to achieve the connected intelligence is quite a challenging task. It's not just we share the knowledge and we can get the job done. Most of cases, it's unexpected situations. We get the knowledge, but we still can't apply them, so they can't be transferred into the intelligence. So that is coming to the field of the autom autonomous <laughs> robots development. A lot of things you may see that, oh, we may already have the solution from the various networking field. Maybe we can borrow the development from the 5D technology into the development robot to avoid the problem of reinventing wheels again. So that's come to the opportunities in the field. So for autonomous robot, we need scalable skills. We need robust deployment. In that sense, what we want from the vertical perspective is that we want offloading workloads for as much as possible and onboarding the intelligence from the external world for as much as possible. To support that kind of need from the 5D's perspective, we would like to have somehow how get the user-centric paradigm of integrating the vertical knowledge into the 5G testing framework. We want to have improved quality of experience rather than the provider optimized the quality of service for the 5G enhanced autonomous robot. That's just the, the, the demand and opportunity in front of us. And also we want to minimize the robot developers need and comprehend the 5G technology in building their robot. It's not only I get the connectivity over here, I have to utilize the virtualization software different network and all kind of onboarding process to improve my deployment of the robot in real world setting. To address those opportunities, there are certain challenges identified by us for 5G enhanced robots development. And that one is called optimizing the quality of experience for 5G orchestrator. And our practice is on building intent recognition and E2 to E2E to e interpretation specifically for the autonomous robots. Another thing is about the fun green resource provision from the 5G testbed. We're trying to optimize the 5G testbed using cloud native approach to actually promote the scalability and availability. Using those approach, we will address the large scale deployment of 5G in real world setting to support multiple robots. And the last one, again, is on promoting the engagement from all players over here. We're trying to, to, to see if we could have the API available in the 5G to be promoted in the robotic field for roles and for other people to utilize those capabilities. And we mentioned that we're working in a new uh, EU project called 5G Enhanced Robot Autonomy. Uh, this project is starting from January 2021 this year and then three years project. Uh, the main target, target over here is that we are trying to deliver tangible improvement on quality of a experience and also encouraging open source collaborative software de development from both networking field and the robotic development. In this project, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to build middleware called 5 era middleware to enable the uh, intent-based networking, standardized API, and cloud-native resource provision. And eventually, we can showcase that the 5G or common emerging 6G technology is not just making the connectivity, but actually helping the real deployment to improve the quality of experience in the vertical sector. Uh, this is a very simple scenario. We are working in the field of uh, 
project and we have autonomous robot they are connected to the cloud for planning for uh, improving their deployability in the real world setting you can see that underneath we have been building uh, our orchestrator based on the open source manner and in that sense all the individual components in the robot are decomposed into containers and docker they are linked to the virtual network functions and those virtual network functions will be dynamically reorganized using mano and then providing a better way of offloading computational resources on the robot and onboarding intelligence to the robot uh, this is illustrated uh, is our uh, net app to be built up in the project you can see that uh, in the center of the picture we have open source manual for resource orchestration and then we have uh, virtual infrastructure managers to be deployed in different kind of setting on robot on edge and on the cloud and all of them will be helping us on deploying or dynamically configuring network functions can be kubernetes based could be virtual network function on virtual machines all kind of this kind of function to be dynamically linked up together to realize our goal on offloading the computing resources meanwhile we can promote the edge devices in terms of grounding the high level intelligence from the cloud to be connected to the real world so that is the network applications to be built up in our project and they will be implemented in different kind of use cases uh, we already mentioned in the previous uh, presentation about the potential use cases to be addressed by the 5g technology but in our use cases we are trying to emphasize the advantage of offloading computational resources and onboarding the intelligence for uh, use case one this is for the civilian robot we're trying to address the issue that like the robot will face problem in unexpected situations in terms of uh, uh, lightning is not good or this area is not recognized then this kind of uh, calculation initially they are carried out on the robot but consume load of battery will be offloaded to the edge device with decomposed uh, network functions and then bear in mind initially we start from the roles they are more centralized and then using the decomposed function we're trying to maintain the same kind of capability but with more robustness and also for the use case of the semi-autonomous transport it's more or less about we share the knowledge between the cloud remote operator and the robot by using the 5g infrastructure using the decomposed containers etc we want to train our network online to actually utilize the knowledge with the new uh, externally provided source of knowledge and the third one is in the logistical environment this is about we have multiple robots running in the hospital they share their perceptions they share their knowledge through the ad devices and then the the, the the resources will be optimized on the edge level to provide different kind of containers to implement optimal performance with the collaboration the last one is remote assistance this is actually is actively building up with uh, francisco in his team and it's about we have remote assistance in uh, deployed in in italy and then we have actual manufacturing plant in cambridge in the uk and the virtual environment actually deployed for assisting the local operator on maintaining their equipment but a lot of emphasis will be placed on what is the best way for us to optimize the resource provision and then to enable the best way of sharing knowledge and sharing the experience from the local operator and the remote operator so that is roughly what i'm trying to say today uh, about using 5g enhanced uh, robot autonomy to improve the vertical use cases to best utilize the capability of emerging technologies. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Thank you, Renxi, uh, also in this case for uh, this very interesting presentation where you have pointed out a, a current research project, the challenging, the challenge that partners are facing and even the benefits that they are in some way in some way expecting. So now we have uh, we have done the four presentations. So uh, first of all, let me ask to the audience if there are questions. If you have questions, you can simply uh, switch on the microphone and the camera and you can ask. In the meantime, I also ask all the speakers to switch on the camera so we can see each other. OK, thanks. So uh, let's try to animate a bit our uh, our discussion. I will uh, make some question and let's say that I will ask to each of you to, you know, to provide your point of view uh, to this to this question. Let's start. Uh, let's say that it is clear from your presentation that uh, a lot has been done in uh, in 5G, but it is also clear that the work is still ongoing and there is still too much to be, uh, a lot to be done in some way. Uh, indeed, Professor Wang told us about the evolution from 1G to 5G and even 6G. So the first question could be, according to your experiences with real industries and companies, uh, what do you feel is the, their knowledge about this evolution? How much companies and industry are aware of the importance for their own business of this evolution? Or how much vice versa, they are just simple users and they still they don't know how to move around uh, and you know to, to approach the, the benefits that could come from, uh, from 5G, which is your experience when you get in contact with, the, uh, with companies and industry. I will start with Christoph. Thank you, Francesco. Indeed, a very good question. I mean, enterprise buyers so far, they were they were they had the choice between Wi-Fi and, and some uh, fixed technology field bus, profi bus, whatever, right? 5G opened a completely new world to them, uh, a world that is massively compact, complex with release 15, release 16, release 17 and everything there is technically. And to our experience, the buyers, they are looking more for use cases than specific technologies. So to a client, uh, when they tender a solution or when they inform about a solution, they don't really care about so much about the underlying technology, but rather for the application. And therefore, I think yes, there is technically still a lot to be done. But from an from a from an enterprise perspective, it's rather the demand side. What are the use cases then be, can be uh, currently deployed? And I think that's where where businesses start thinking. And they, they then move back the value chain and understand the complexity there is, but the start I think is always the use case. Yeah, that's that I feel you are you are correct, and we will talk a bit a little bit more about use cases uh, later on during this discussion. But let's go ahead with this first round of table, and I ask uh, Xiambin if he would like to provide his point of view on this question, this first question. Okay. Uh... I guess you know for most of the uh, consumers, uh, they just probably realize maybe 5G can bring more bandwidth, uh, you know, faster speed. Uh, they do not really have lots of other, you know, uh, experience. Uh, now for the industry sector, I guess you know the just the beginning of uh, 5G uh, deployment, and in many uh, industry uh, users. Uh, has no idea how to evaluate the the value of 5G uh, that in terms of cost effectiveness like you know basically if you have a 4G if you have a 5G you if, if you have a Wi-Fi you know how do you compare you know the 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 the, the appropriateness cost effectiveness the value of the the, the wireless networks um, now the other thing is that uh, users, industry users, are developing their KPIs, how to evaluate the future 5G and 6G, you know, in terms of security, latency, reliability, the, uh, as I mentioned, you know, the large scale system agility, you know, um, how intelligent they are, how reliable they are. So there are many new factors people uh, began to realize 
uh, I think at this stage, many industry users are not really uh, aware of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even as you mentioned, I feel that the cost and scalability are an important factor. And even on this, we can say something more uh, in the next question. But in the meantime, Wei Ming, uh, if you like to share your point of view on this first question. I probably give you a little bit uh, different. Uh, it's not uh, because I have been in China for, for uh, almost three years. And I just checked the list of attendees. I think I'm the only one from uh, from China. So in, in China, during the past two, three years, uh, 5G applications are very different, probably uh, from uh, in Europe, in North America. Here, it's mostly pushed by the government, by the mobile service providers. So many industrial companies, they, they have been, they have developed, deployed 5G applications in their shop floor. Not because they wanted it, not because they needed, because they got the developed the deployed for free. <laughs> uh, and and, uh, and they want to show to the government to say we have 5G applications, and so we are most advanced in the world. And uh, so so that's the situation. That's why I mentioned in my short presentation that I was giving many uh, demonstrations like. Uh, uh, showcases and I, I told them 70-80% of uh, cases are not really uh, needed. Probably most in most city I told you, I have all told you, even um, uh, wide communication will be much better and good enough. You don't need even wireless and they deployed the 5G just to share the 5G. In some situations for the data collection monitoring, 3G will be enough. They are using 5G because of the temperature data, whatever data is very low, uh, like frequencies, not only only small numbers. It's, you don't really need this kind of the uh, 5G. So, so that's the situation in China. Even even though there are a few good ones, but uh, we are also work hard trying to find some I would call it meaningful applications of 5G in manufacturing, in car manufacturing. And also, that I really, we really need to take advantages of the 5G, uh, like the, the three key things uh, I we, we mentioned already during the during the I think three or four of us talks. So that's the situation here. And in my view, uh, it really, really need to review the requirement of each case, each scenario. I would say if wide communication is enough, is the best. If not, if we need a wireless, we compare with the Wi-Fi, even Wi-Fi 6, some situations, and, and with 5. So we need to take advantages of the technology. So we really don't want to apply it because we want to apply. So that's my key point. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's nice to, you know, even to see a different point of view in a specific country in this case where this pushing action, uh, push action yeah. from the government is uh, doing something that perhaps could be needed or perhaps could not be needed or it is not completely completely clear. Renxi, which is your point of view? I, yes. I think this is just a similar experience like others. When we're talking about the uh, advantage of 5G, people always ask if we already got 4G. It's quite good. I mean, what actually you bring to us? But actually from my perspective, it's another angle over here. It's about if we're working in the same way as we do now, like robotics, we, we do. We, we can use 4G and we can achieve things we, we get, but we are not good enough. And this, this is about that not only the use cases to be generated by the various networking people, but we have to change ourselves to adapt our own application to actually take the advantage. Because our own application nowadays is very hard to be scaled, it's very hard to be deployed. We need to actually change ourselves to from the monolithic applications to distributed application in terms of the vertical industry. By only doing that, then we can take advantage of the emerging capability. That is kind of things not only to be delivered, the use case cannot be delivered by, by, by the wireless developers, they have to develop by us, by modifying the way we're doing existing stuff better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I, uh, uh, also, this is important. And by the way, you have mentioned different. Can you can you see hear me? Yeah, yes. 
Ah, okay. You have mentioned some very important aspect, let me say, related to uh, to cost, even to scalability, even to uh, specific use cases. Now, uh, you know, uh, we have two, let's say, different types of uh, companies and industry. Sometimes we deal with small and medium enterprises, and sometimes we need with large companies and large enterprises, and both of them they may have their needs in terms of production control, predictive maintenance, remote assistance, and, and, and so on. But you also mentioned that sometimes they, they still don't know their ne needs, as for instance was mentioned by Renxi for the robots application. So what we can do from this point of view to support companies, above all small and medium enterprises, that sometimes they do not have money to invest, even in research and development, to understand better their needs toward the use of 5G, uh, even in some way to, you know, to standardize needs of, uh, of companies so later on they can better use and request 5G uh, technologies. And from the other side, still Ranksy was mentioning they need to minimize the comprehension of 5G for developers that is important as well. So what we feel we can do uh, to push in some way uh, that, you know, to have, have a better specification of needs and to support companies and uh, both small and medium enterprise companies that could be a problem as you can imagine and from the other side large companies that perhaps are more able to invest uh, to invest money and to do their own uh, research and development yeah. let's go around the table again starting from christoph yeah um, it, it's a very valid point and i think it's it's currently why the industry is not moving as fast as we all would hope with 5g and, and when we think about the problem, it's, it's, I think it's twofold. Um, it's a supply issue and a demand issue. Let me, let me specify. On the supply side, which for us are the equipment providers, the vendors, the application providers, clearly um, 5G and, and 5G in a, in, a, in a LAN perspective, so in, in, in a manufacturing perspective or in, in any corporate enterprise environment, the solutions are not specified yet, meaning it's always a project um, that a telco operator, systems integrator, etc., need to do. And it's it's a huge effort. And, and the TCOs of those networks, they're currently nowhere close to being attractive to SMEs, right? If you look into the dominant solutions, uh, Nokia NDAC, um, Ericsson's um, Industry Connect and, and Huawei solutions and, and what there is out there, the, the, the costs are just are just enormous and, and one of the drivers is that no one has achieved a productization of, of 5G in the enterprise sector yet. So every time there is this development efforts, as you said, there's integration efforts, there's planning efforts, there is no standardization, no productization in industry and, and we think that's hindering the supply side to, to sell more networks. Equally, um, the second is, is the demand side and there um, I think a lot is, is happening. Uh, we heard uh, China as an example before. The government did a wonderful job. You can see some um, some initial programs in France and the UK, where the governments are, are providing funds and grants for for enabling or, or, or developing further 5G demand side use cases. And um, also there, the idea is that not only the standardization needs to happen from a supply side, so from the providers but also from the demand side, the more uniform um, the demand is and the more similar the use cases can, be, can become, I think the faster productization can, um, can be achieved and ultimately, and this is where you correctly were pointing towards, the more penetration of, of 5G in the, in the SMB segment can be, uh, can be achieved. But I, I think it needs to be both from supply and demand side in order to be successful and to, to, to move at the pace that we all wish it, it, it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead with this round of table. Uh, Xiambin? Okay, uh, let me share a few points here. Uh, first thing is that, you know, uh, again, I want to say that the future rule of wireless network that include both cellular and other short range uh, access network is to provide, uh, you know, the service provisioning uh, and the value realization. Uh, for industry 4.0. So basically, I, I consider, you know, uh, 5G is just a one access network. Uh, 
and in the future, you know, uh, there will be a coexistence between uh, uh, all kind of wireless network. And right now, the the uh, challenge is that you know uh, there is no uh, interoperation between uh, different uh, wireless access network. That basically uh, increases the cost. Um, <clears throat> now, the value of the wireless network is to uh, provide the service provisioning that doesn't have to be like conventional communication related services. Uh, it may be related to control, uh, you know, sensing, localization, synchronization, all kind of industry services. That, with that uh, in mind, uh, we also have the value realization, uh, you know, as a, as a performance indicator because you provide a service, uh, everything comes with a cost. Right now, uh, I, I think, you know, all kind of this 5G project, we basically know the, the, the cost, you know, um, actually, eventually, you know, if we consider industry 4.0, the purpose is to achieve some kind of value. Now, the net value is the value you can provide and you have to remove the cost involved. So if we, we consider the cost involved, uh, if you try to meet some industry needs, you know, sometimes you do need to, you, you do have to use 5G, but sometimes you don't have to, you know. Really, it depends on the need of your industry applications. For example, latency, data rate, that can be dramatically different in, in many different applications. Um, I, I guess, you know, uh, the, the future is really with a cost, you know, uh, effective in mind, with a value realization in mind, with a service provisioning in mind that, you know, we operate the uh, wireless network and further integrate with, you know, uh, cloud edge computing, uh, the machine learning, uh, big data and analytics all together. And, but the, the goal is application oriented value realization. The value is a fundamental goal. So achieve the value, you know, there is a market. Yeah, yeah, and indeed, so we do have problem from supply and demand, as mentioned by uh, Christoph. There are problem in uh, standardization and orchestration, and what, which is the situation, vice versa, that was interesting and nice in uh, in China regarding this point of view, Wei Ming. Uh, so to have still the, the the view of a specific country. Yeah, in fact, uh, I think Christoph and Shenping uh, had. Uh, already good overview covered the most of the specific situation here even though i mentioned they already had a lot not a lot but many uh, demonstrations applications use cases push the government invested mostly by, by government or by by mobile service company service providers but the smes they they really according to my knowledge smes they really haven't uh, take this kind of advantage. Yes, all the demonstrations so far are in larger companies. And uh, why I was asking myself why? Probably because the government not everybody can apply. Like even even small companies apply is easy and not getting. So one side and and the Christopher for mention and champion also mentioned the value and the cost because uh, you one year one even though you get free equipment for deployment. And later on, you have to pay the, the monthly, the annual call, uh, the, 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 the fee. And then for the SMEs, small company, whether they are affordable for that. And particularly, whether that specific application is really meaningful, I call it meaningful, useful for them, has a value for them. And I, I, according to my own experience during the past two years, we are trying to deploy a different applications in some city, even, even for monitoring maintenance, I said most, mostly they already has a SCADA, MIMS already there. But if we, not if, like in, in some, some collaborator, we find a few critical equipment, we want to do, we want to do uh, the, 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 the real time maintenance, or even the photo diagnostic, we want to collect, let's say, vibration or, or, or like, uh, the, 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 the specific data and with high frequency, like 5K, 10K uh, hertz data. 
and the, the if and the deployment of wide uh, wide Ethernet wide network is difficult. So that we if we have the of course we can have Wi-Fi 6G, but we don't have it yet. So 5G we 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 play a, a good good law for 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 that one. But otherwise, uh, it's uh, it's kind of a uh, uh, still a challenge so far. I think a cost uh, and value. Uh, like uh, both of the both of me already mentioned as a key point over there, particularly for the SME. Yeah. Yeah. Ranksy. All right. I, I think it's a good point made by the uh, all of them just now, especially on the service provision. And this is about the value of uh, producing from the wireless networking translated into the integrated cloud edge environment for the services. 5G is not a stop. It's not something we say this is a development finished over here. It's an ongoing development and eventually it will reach the point to provide the best value toward the connected uh, or toward the connected intelligence. That is kind of ongoing development. I I'm sure, you know, we will find out the, the, the best usage scenario. And when we reach a point that we realize that, wow, what can we do now with all these kind of possibilities? And the, y y y in terms of Industry 4.0, in terms of uh, autonomous robots, we said that we have our limitations. And then currently it is not immediately we can claim that using 5G communication, those limitations will be addressed completely. No, it's not there yet. But I think for the the 5G developer and also they also modifying themselves, they're talking about the 5.5G, 6G or connected intelligence for everything. And they are actually modifying their position to find the best value solutions in terms of improve our delivery of the services. Meanwhile, you know, we are also adapting ourselves in the field is that we have all this big application now, then we make them more distributed, more scalable, and then in the future we'll benefit on the new intelligence generated by the 6G and provide this kind of uh, really kind of grounded intelligence in the real field, which I can benefit from that. You know, for, for big enterprise, they can build their state of art, intelligence the, uh, systems to do things, but in the future, especially for the SME, they can actually take advantage of the connected intelligence, actually achieving things which they can't do now by using the ongoing 5G development and 5G and beyond to do things which was not possible. Because even nowadays, with a lot of uh, small appliances we have, they are connected. They are actually connected to some kind of cloud services to have some kind of uh, advanced application for us with the development of 5G, especially the view translating from this is only the technology for communication to the new view of that this is actually provision of a service, including the communication and the computation together. That is actually making things very interesting for the future. I want to add, this, add this one really more. I add one yeah, more point. Please go when and because of the cost and value cost. I think currently even in China, I think infrastructure is already there. I would say, and um, the, the 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 5G chips, 5G modems, particularly for industrial 4.0 applications, because you want to connect everything together, you need lots, and and. and um, I think it's a bottleneck. I'm not sure, and Christophe may have a good idea, uh, business side. It's 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 a global challenge, and uh, I think it's not like in short term we can reduce the cost and meet all the all the requirement to have all these chips. So that's a, a sense, sense probably. I'm not sure. It's, it's I'm not business uh, person, so uh, it's, it's but uh, but I, I I can feel the challenge for the industry. Well, I mean, you're, you're absolutely spot on there. Um, it's both. Um, it's first, um, obviously, the price, especially on 5G SA, that is, um, I, I think, often way beyond the business benefits that a solution would bring, clearly. Yeah. But equally now, over the last quarter, the last two quarters, uh, chipsets are becoming scarcity everywhere. And obviously, we yeah. also feel that in, in, in any tenders for mobile private networks, that basically delivery times they range uh, up to two years. Uh, so it's um, it's both it's it's the cost, but also the availability. You're absolutely spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Actually, uh, I feel that the, the comments provided by Rangxi and by Wei Ming uh, open the way for the very last question uh, that in some way that I would like to make to you. It's a provocative question in some way. So 5G it's, it is something going on and there is a lot to do. So should we go ahead with this intensity in research and development in doing something or there is a risk of a of a bubble let me say that will explode in some way not because there are no benefits from 5g but just because we are going ahead perhaps too fast uh, while vice versa still companies they need more time uh, you know to understand their needs and so on so just in one in one quest in one sentence very like five seconds uh, it's a provocative question. Is there the risk for a bubble or uh, we are going ahead too fast or not? Let's go again from Christoph. It's a difficult question, but I'll give it a start and hopefully my colleagues can, can enhance or correct me. So I, I think it's an absolute must. We need to continue the research. Uh, it will pay off and it will it will lay the ground for 6G and then future, um, future technologies. Great. Sianbin? Uh, yes. uh, the microphone. Oh yeah, so I, I think there are still lots of, uh, you know, uh, challenges to be overcome and, uh, you know, uh, definitely there are lots of exciting uh, um, directions that we can pursue. I totally agree and then we, we will continue for sure. And I'm the application guy, so I'm looking for their the technology, their solutions. Hmm. I think I believe this, yeah I believe this is a key milestones for us to achieve the digital world digitalization and connected intelligence everywhere we need to be patient we will be there I agree with all of you and I really take this opportunity to thanks all of you for this very interesting presentation and comments and you know uh, I feel it was very useful at least for for me it was very useful to understand better this world and even I suppose for the for the audience I ask again the audience if there are questions our speakers are are here and they are able to to answer otherwise I feel it's almost time to close this uh, this session okay uh, no additional questions. So once again, thank you. We have really appreciated your uh, your talks and your comments, and I hope we can see each other in person in the next year edition of ISM, where we can do again this session to see what has changed along the last year. So let's hope to do it in presence next time. All right. Thank you very much for. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Yeah. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.